Hello everyone, welcome back to Turn of the Century Games. My name is Mike. Uh, today we got part four of our Pokemon Blue playthrough. Uh, we last left off, we were here in the Celadon, or not Celadon, the Cerulean Pokemon Center. Uh, Cerulean City is an interesting town. Epic foreshadowing. Um, mainly because this is going to be the first instance where we are going to use the famed Trainer Fly glitch. Um, the reason for that uh, is because, I'm going to show you real quick. Um, this guy right over here. So, this guy uh, in the water. He's very important to this glitch. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. First thing we gotta do, though, is we've got to make our way um, up across Nugget Bridge, which is this bridge right over here. Right here. We gotta make our way up that bridge. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I want to come into this house here. And I don't care about talking to that guy, I just want to get into his backyard. And I believe it's right here. There it is. Alright, rare candy right there. Go ahead and walk through this guy's house again. Um, also down here in this house, there's our first trainer that will trade us. So this guy will give us a Jinx uh, if we trade a Poliwhirl for him. Uh, Poliwhirl is kind of a pain to get. Um, but Jinx can only be gotten through that guy. We could also use the Ditto Glitch to go ahead and get Jinx. Um, but I don't really want to do that. At least not at the moment. Uh, our team is pretty well-rounded. Um, and our rival leads off with... I believe uh Pidgey or Spiro. He leads off with a flying type, I'm fairly certain. Maybe. I don't remember. Maybe it's Sandshrew that he leads off with. I don't even know. We're just gonna play the game. Like, I'm not even gonna get into specifics at the moment, because I can't even tell you for certain. We're gonna visit the Mart here real quick. Uh, we do have one Great Ball, which is going to be very, very helpful. Uh, there's one Pokemon in particular that I'm going to use that Great Ball for. Uh, and that Pokemon is Abra. I'm gonna grab a few more Pokeballs. And we're going to leave this area. So... Before we go fight the rival uh, up on Nugget Bridge, there's a couple Pokemon over here on Route 4 that we need to get. Uh, the first one is Sandshrew. Sandshrew should be on this route. There's a Rattata. We don't need Rattata. We've already got one. Sandshrew! Sandshrew is actually going to become part of my team. I actually am going to implement Sandshrew for a while. Um, eventually making it Sand Slash. So, Shockey's moves are pretty useless against it, except for Mega Punch. Uh, but again, Mega Punch is only like an 80% accurate move. That should be plenty. Let's go ahead and capture him. Hopefully. Alright, we got Sandshrew. So Sandshrew's not going to be useful against Misty. However, he will be very useful against Lieutenant Surge. Uh, we could use either Sandshrew or Diglett, and I'd prefer to use Sandshrew. Uh, just because when it eventually evolves into Sand Slash, uh, it's going to become very, very powerful. So, 
We're going to... Mm, hang on one second here. I am going to be right back. Uh, I did want to go ahead and look up what uh, the possible Pokemon in Route 4 are here. Uh, and actually, Sandshrew is the only new one that we can get there, so we've already got it. Let's go ahead and head back to the Pokemon Center, uh, where we're going to mix up our team a little bit here. So against the rival, the rival's going to have a couple of new Pokemon on his team. Namely, he'll have an Abra that our uh, Sandshrew can go ahead and battle for some very easy experience points. Uh, we are going to get rid of Butterfree. We're no longer going to use it. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's keep the rest of those for now. And let's go ahead and withdraw Sandshrew. And then let's deposit Bulbasaur. I know, a little weird that I'm depositing Bulbasaur, but I want to see what this Paris's stats are. And what moves it has. Okay, it only has Scratch. Which isn't great. Let's go ahead and heal them up. Alright. So, first thing we're gonna do... Um... Hmm, what is the first thing we're gonna do? Well, I guess the first thing that we could do is we could attempt to fight the rival. So let's go ahead and do that by switching Paris up top. Uh, he's going to end up taking damage probably immediately unless I switch him out. Yep, I'm still struggling along back here. Sure I am. I could actually probably shelve my Nidorans. Um and just finish leveling them up later. Pidgeotto is not what I want to see right here. I forgot this was not... Hmm. Yeah, I don't want to see Pidgeotto. Let's, uh, let's switch out for Shocky the Pikachu. Very thankful that it did not go with, uh... Sand attack there? Sand attack would have been horrible. Well, let's... Hit it with Thunder Wave. Oh, uh, we are not gonna drop it with Shocky the Pikachu, I don't think. Shocky might be a little too underleveled. Yep. This could be a huge amount of levels for Nidoran Male if it could knock it out. Of course, we're gonna have to tank a couple of quick attacks. Nope. This ain't gonna happen. See what evil what even leveling does? It just ruins your chances of doing anything useful. Like at this point, I'm willing to just take levels on something and actually lose this fight. Here's a long shot. Let's see if Paris can take it out. And... Wow, Paris is faster than it. So Paris is going to get all those experience points. Um, what else do I have here? I got Sandshrew. Uh, let's go ahead and let's run Sandshrew against the Abra. Because the Abra can't attack. So that's free. 
experience points. I don't foresee myself winning this fight because I'm not going to bother using any healing items in this fight. It's pointless for me to do so. No point in changing Pokemon. It's gonna use Tail Whip. Uh, Sand Shrew can use Sand Attack to lower its accuracy and hopefully... Ouch. Hyper Fang hurts. Alright, Paris. This Rattata has a stat drop against it. Hopefully that's enough to... Nope. Just nope. Oh, we survived. Barely, but we survived. Oh, we're gonna take it out. Wow. Okay. So now I gotta fight Charmander. There's no point in changing Pokemon. We're just gonna do what we can to it. There's Ember, we're gonna faint there. See, even leveling does not do you any favors. Even leveling is just a terrible strategy in Gen 1 Pokemon games. No, we weren't going to get that fight. That, of course, hurts a little bit, but, um, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and we'll put Shocky back up at the top. Realistically, if I can get past that Pidgeotto, um, then things might turn out a little bit differently. So that's why we're coming over here to the tall grass. We're to grind just a little bit. Quick attack will always move first, and it's kind of crap. I hate that. Oh wow, we tanked that tackle. All right, we got a good damage roll. Let's see if we can. Yeah, not this one. Oh, crit hit. Okay. Let's see here. Yep, that's basically how I'm gonna do this. I'm going to just grind my Pokemon until almost all of them are fainted.
and then we're gonna just go from there. Thrilling gameplay right here. I really don't want to level up Paris here because Paris against Spiro is not a good matchup. Ouch. That's Spiro. Pokemon Center will heal up. And back over. Alright, level 14. We finally get the same type attack bonus move, but Poison Sting is pretty trash. Like, Horn Attack does more damage. And we're intentionally saving that swimmer in Misty's gym for the Mew glitch, or the trainer fly glitch, whatever you want to call it. Of course it went for... Jerk. Thank you. 
put too many sand attacks. I'm not gonna stand there and just get attacked for no reason. Shocky the Pikachu's turn. We really need to get our Pikachu's level up, so... if we get Pikachu up one more level then we can go ahead and fight the rival. Oh, that's a sand shrew. <laughs> that's what happens when you use turbo fire buttons. And of course that Rattata just knocks us out. Because of course it did. Make sure we use Mega Punch here. Trying to learn Quick Attack. What should we lose? Uh, let's lose Growl, because I don't use it. Alright. Heal up one more time, and then we'll go fight the rival again. Alright. Shocky the Pikachu versus Pidgeotto. Thundershock. We're three levels higher now. Oh, that's much better. And it's paralyzed. Bye, Pidgeotto.
Alright, so yes, I am going to change against Abra again. Because Abra is going to be easy experience points for Sandshrew. Because all this Abra knows is teleport. This Rattata could be annoying, so let's go ahead and switch back over to Shaki the Pikachu. Mega Punch is gonna knock it out. It's amazing what a few more levels can do. Uh, yes, I will change Pokemon against his Charmander. I'm gonna go for Nidoran Male, just because of its stupid high attack stat. Leer first. It's gonna have the speed advantage. Perfect, got the poison. That's like a 30% chance. So that's what I wanted to see. Actually use a potion on it around here. And I'm burned. Damn. That sucks. Because that cuts my attack stat in half. sucks. Um, is there a Spiro out there? Just because I think Spiro could probably beat it in one hit. And as long as it, yeah, as long as it didn't use Ember, we were fine. It's gonna take that chunk of poison damage and then Peck should finish it off. That'll be good experience for Spiro. Smellulator is such 90s terminology. <laughs> Alright though, so we're now getting ready to go out on a Nugget Bridge. Um... Oh boy. So we got five trainers ahead of us, plus a mandatory rocket. Uh, I'll be right back with you guys. Give me just one minute. Okay, guys, we're back. So we've gone ahead. We've defeated uh, Gary now. So let's go ahead and let's head up the bridge. Um, I don't know which trainer is first. I don't know if it's a lass or if it's a bug catcher. Let's see. All right, it's a bug catcher. So let's go ahead and put Spiro up top.
This is Nugget Bridge. Get us five trainers and win a fabulous prize. Uh-huh. Yeah. Fabulous prizes and all that. Okay, Mr. Bug Catcher. I hate to tell you this, but, um, my bird is going to eat your bug. The early bird gets the worm. So. Nope, not changing Pokemon. Just gonna tank these little bur or these little buggies. Okay. Now it's serious. Let's see what she has. She has a Pidgey. Nasty sand attack. Oh, come on. Got a bad damage roll there. Okay, a Nidoran. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and change. Let's switch over to Sandshrew. Poison Sting's going to do nothing to us. Um, poison types are not very effective against ground types. However, I could still be poisoned by that, so I do need to be careful of it. There's another bug catcher up here. Uh, but I believe that he uses some weaker types. So let's go ahead and... Wow, Paris needs a lot of experience points to get to the next level. We'll go ahead and we'll try Paris. Pretty sure this is a bug catcher. It might not be. It might be a junior trainer. I'm not entirely certain. No, it's a youngster. So he's probably got like Rattatas. Hate Rattata. I especially hate that move. Hyper Fang does half your HP, I believe. Unless that's Super Fang, I don't remember which one's which. Got a lucky damage roll. Got a lucky damage roll. I'ma take it. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not gonna switch Pokemon just yet. 
now I'll switch Pokemon. Because now it will count as Paris being out there for a part of the fight, and he'll get some of the experience. A wrapped miss is very good. He's got his little Zubats. I got Shocky the Pikachu. Just like we did in Mount Moon, we're gonna go ahead and just electrocute this Zubat. Once we get to Celadon City, I am going to have to go ahead, when I go ahead and evolve this Pikachu, I am going to have to go ahead and increase its defense with some irons. Uh, what are we at here? What are we at? Nope, not getting tired yet. but we held on. And yes, I will change Pokemon. I'm going to go to Sandshrew. We at least have a typing advantage here. to get a crit right now. There we go. Take that one. Alright, where are we at here? Um... Let's not waste items. Stomp us, huh? I don't think so. I don't think so. You got one Pokemon. What you got? Mmm, a damn Mankey. Fighting type. Alright. Well, this could go one of two ways.
Got the poison. Ouch. So Karate Chop is a high crit move. Um, it will critical hit more often than not. That's what you get with a high attack stat. Just drop it. Alright. So, where are we at here? What do our Pokemon look like? Um, let's pull Sandshrew to the top. And we're actually going to put Paris right in... Yeah, we're gonna put Paris up front. Yay, I beat the five contest trainers. I just earned a fabulous prize. I got a nugget. Yay. But I like to join Team Rocket. A group dedicated to evil using Pokemon. got an Ekans. We have an Ekans problem. This Ekans could wrap us, or it could use Poison Sting. Poison Sting is horrible in this case. Because Paris, unlike Bulbasaur, I don't believe is a poison type. I think it's just a straight grass type. No, it's a bug grass type. Which is even worse. It means we're doubly weak to poison type moves. Um... I don't need to get Paris out of here. Pronto. Lower its accuracy a little bit. I was hoping we wouldn't get hit with that. I hate getting stuck in rap. So... <sighs> something I've not mentioned here, um, maybe I'll get into it a bit more when it becomes relevant. Yeah, never mind. Pretend I didn't say anything. Normally I'd throw out Shocky here, but uh, we're gonna go with Spiro. Defeated Team Rocket. Okay, so let's go ahead and save the game. We're looking for a couple of Pokemon here uh, in the grass to our left. There's a grass patch over there by that ledge, which is what we're going to be looking for. Um, him first try. 
Okay. Abra is the first Pokemon that I'm looking for. I have this Great Ball. I'm going to use this Great Ball. Nope. Load the stake. We'll try again. See if the calculation is any different. Yes, okay. So Abra is what we need. We need Abra for our trainer fly glitch to work. No, I don't want to give a nickname to Abra. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to save. So we gotta come down here. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't need to do this. Ready? Swag PC. Alright. So, first thing I need to do. I need to do a couple things. I need to deposit... Let's see here. We're gonna keep Shocky. Shocky is useful. We're going to deposit, for the moment, Paris, and we're going to deposit our female Nidoran. Now, we're going to withdraw Abra, because I need Abra. And we're also going to withdraw... Does Clefairy have the move that I need? It does not. We're going to leave Clefairy. We're going to withdraw Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is actually somewhat useful for this trick. Like I said, later in the game, I am going to be using Parasect with Spore to go ahead and execute this trick. So the first thing we need to do is we need to move... Well, first thing we need to do is we need to go heal this Jigglypuff. So that was... A screw up. We're gonna waste a little bit of time here coming back and healing to heal this Jigglypuff. Uh, yes, I would like to buy another five Pokeballs, please. To do this trick, you see that trainer is literally just one tile off screen. So he can actually see us from here, if I were to move right. I'm gonna move up here so that I'm one tile out of the way. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Those of you that have watched a lot of uh, Pokemon content are probably very, very aware of what you're about to see. However, for those of you that this is your first time, this is the trainer fly glitch. So let's go ahead and move one step down. And as we're moving down, we're going to press the start button to open up our menu. Uh, we want our... Let's see here. We're gonna need Abra, so we're just gonna put him at the top. Actually, no, we're not. I'm gonna take Abra. I'm gonna switch him with Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff is going to be our very first Pokemon out when we do... No. No, that's not what I want. I want Shocky the Pikachu up top. Alright, so here we go. We're going to move down and we're going to press start as we're moving down. Okay, this has opened up our menu. If I close the menu right now, that trainer's going to see us. So instead, what I want to do is I want to go here and I want to go down to Abra and I want to hit teleport. That'll take us back to the Pokemon Center. But, notice, that guy sees us right as we're teleporting. So this puts us in a state where the game thinks that there's a trainer walking to us to initiate a battle. You'll notice now that my start button does not work and that I cannot talk to NPCs. 
To get out of this state, you actually have to have a trainer come up to you and challenge you. Because that's what the game is expecting. So, to get this started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here into Misty's gym. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to stand in front of this trainer so that he swims over and talks to me. To initiate a battle. Now, of course, Shocky the Pikachu is going to come out and torch his two water Pokemon. So he's going to attack us with Bubble. Bubble's a very weak water type move. Good hit on that one. Okay. So, we have dropped the horsey. Now we gotta take on the shelter. So, this shelter is very important to this trick. This shelter has a special stat of 21. And I'll explain why that's important here in just a moment. Now, before I take this shelter out, who do I have that has stat-reducing moves? Spiro. Uh, wait a minute. Does Nidoran have Growl, or does it have... No, it only has Leer. Spiro has Growl, right? Okay, so yeah, I'm going to switch over to Spiro. Yeah, he can go ahead and up his with, you know, that all he wants. I'm going to growl at this shelter six times. There's a reason I'm doing this. That's two. That's three. That's four. Crit hit. It's five. And that's six. That should be the last time that that can happen. So, let's go ahead and take it out at this point. Now, its defense is up because it, you know, got a couple of uh, withdraws in there while we were doing that. So it's going to take a little bit to knock it out, but that's okay. Okay. So, we've defeated this swimmer. Keep in mind, his shelter had a special stat of 21 and we used Growl six times. So you can now see that our menu is functioning. Everything's back up and working the way that it should be. I'm gonna switch Jigglypuff up top here. <laughs> I wanna make sure that I have... What is my weakest Pokemon? Hmm. Kind of feel like I should grab something else from the Pokemon Center here real quick. Something that has an attack but is relatively weak. Uh, like Rattata. So let's actually deposit, uh... Let's deposit Nidoran Mail. And let's withdraw... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say Rattata is probably my best option. I need a fairly weak Pokemon that still has attacking moves. So, let's go this way. 
Now, if everything worked correctly, and it should have, we're gonna come back up here to Nugget Bridge, and the start menu should open up. That ain't normal. I hope this works. Look at that. A wild level one Mew. So, effectively what we did here. Let me just explain. So the level 20, or the stat 21 in the special stat for the shelter, uh, refers to the index number of the Pokemon in hex code. So when we teleported away from that trainer, we initiated a battle um, event on this map. This is Route 24. We initiated a battle event. However, we broke the sequence by teleporting away before that trainer could um, interact with us. That puts us in a locked state where our start button and our um, A and B buttons are locked out because we're not supposed to be able to do anything while that trainer's moving up to talk to us. So, in order to break that, we had to go ahead and fight another trainer that could walk up to us to complete the cycle. However, the game still in its memory has loaded that in this map, we are in a battle. So when we first move into the Route 24 map, it initiates a battle. But because we're not in Tallgrass, where there's an encounter table, and we're not fighting a trainer, because no trainer has talked to us, and like, because that sequence has been finished. You know, that sequence was finished when we talked to the swimmer. So the game has to pull the data from somewhere. So what it does is it looks back at, it does what it always does. It looks back at the last loaded Pokemon, because that's the first bit of stuff in memory that it can use. In this case, it looks at the special stat 21, which references the index number for Mew in the code. The reason why we used Growl six times is because the Pokemon's level is determined by the attack stage of the opposing Pokemon. So, it normally starts out... Okay, so normally the Pokemon's, um, you know... Stat stages can be altered positive up to a maximum of positive six or down to a minimum of negative six. We took it all the way down to negative six and it could go all the way up to positive six. It starts at zero. So that is a what? 13. Yeah, that's 13 different possibilities. So it goes from, in essence, one to 13. By dropping it six times, it would have normally started at level seven. By dropping the attack stage six times, we dropped this Mew to level one. That's important here in a moment as well. What I'm going to do now with Jigglypuff is I'm going to try to put this Mew to sleep. Because sleep automatically um, adds 20% to the catch rate of even legendaries like Mew. So Mew is now asleep. Now I want to pull out Rattata. So that I can get a little bit of damage on. Now as long as I don't get a crit here, then we're golden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the state real quick. Okay. So this Mew is still fast asleep. We are at the perfect performance ability for a regular Pokeball. I should have saved the Great Ball for this, but I used it to catch the Abra. Let's go ahead and try to catch this Mew with a Pokeball. This is not going to be easy. At best, normally, I think you have, like, a 3% chance to catch Mew. Like, it has a, a 3. Like, if you look at its catch rate in Hex, uh, out of 255, it has a 3. So, if I do some math real quick here, I'm just gonna do it on my computer here, since I'm just sitting in front of it. Let me pull up the calculator. Uh, 255... Well, hold on here. 3 divided by 255. Uh... <laughs> 
you have a 1.2% chance of catching Mew. No, that can't be right. This is a... It's, it's a very low chance. It is a very low chance. Uh, this is actually 0.0117% chance of catching Mew. So by putting it to sleep, I automatically increase my percentage by 20%. So that helps quite a bit. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to catch it. We very well may not catch it here. Now I gotta switch back over to Jigglypuff because I have to put it back to sleep. Got it. All right, now that's not the only manipulations we're gonna do here. So we got Mew. We got Mew. One. So we now have Mew in our party here. Uh, let's go ahead and check its stats, shall we? So it's asleep. Uh, it's level 1. It's got 2 hit points out of 13. It's got 7s and everything. Uh, that's also a lot of experience points that it has. Uh, it has 777,162 experience points. Uh, it needs 63 to get to level 2. So, what we want to happen uh, in our very next fight is we want to go and get less than 68 experience points on this Mew. So, we're gonna do that by coming down here and we're going to come out to the wild Pokemon grass and we're going to... <sighs> Effectively, what we're going to do is we're going to find a wild Pokemon preferably something fairly low level, and then divide its experience that it gives between two or three Pokemon. So hopefully we find something like a Spearow, like a low level Spearow, or a low level Sandshrew. There's Rattata, it's level 10. We're gonna have to split this among three Pokemon. All right, so we got Mew. Mew's gonna get some experience. Uh. We'll have to send out Spiro, And we'll probably have to get a hit with Spiro in order for it to do anything. Alright, so now we want to send out Shocky the Pikachu. Because we don't want to get 68 experience points on Mew. We want to get less than 68 experience points. There's a reason, and I'll explain it once we get it. So. We're dividing whatever experience this Rattata is worth among three Pokemon. It should be more than evenly divided at this point. Alright, let's see what that was worth. Mew gained 27 experience points. Now remember, Mew needed 68 to get just to level 2, but he had a ton of experience points already. Let's see what that did. You grew to level 100. Let's go! <laughs> and my controller disconnected. <laughs> oh my god. So what just happened was a glitch called Experience Underflow. So basically, a level 1 Pokemon is not supposed to exist in these games. Uh, in reality, Pokemon in Gen 1 games start at level 2 and they go up to level 100. Um, you don't find them at level 100 in the wild, obviously. But, the lowest level you ever find them at, because of the experience point threshold, is level 2. So because Mew was at level 1, Mew essentially had negative experience points. Which is why the 
experience point number was so great. That's why it showed that it had so many experience points already. It was because it was actually a negative number. So as lo it, what the game was actually telling us was that we needed to get to 60, we needed to get 68 experience points to get to one experience point. Um, and so because we got less than that, the number still stayed negative. The game has no idea how to handle that, so it just wraps it back. Uh, instead of going f rounding upward, it rounds, you know, to zero. Zero in hex is equal to 255 in hex. It's it's weird. Like, it just rounds back down, and by doing that, it says, you have a ton of experience points, and just shoots your level one Pokemon straight up to level 100. So that's where we're at. We now have a level 100 Mew in our party. We could effectively just trash the entire game now. This game has gone, this playthrough has gone far from casual. <laughs> so, that is going... Oh my gosh. So, alright, let's, uh, let's heal up our Pokemon. Yes, I have these, uh, relatively normal stat Pokemon, and then I also have a level 100 Mew. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of Turn of the Century Games. I hope that you all have enjoyed the content. If you have so far, please leave a like down below. Leave a comment. Let us know what you thought. Uh, have you guys hit the subscribe button yet? Make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button, either down below the really big red button down there that says subscribe, or the little icon down here in the corner. Uh, if you hover over that, you can actually go ahead and subscribe as well. Make sure you guys get that bell on so you get all of our notifications for all of our videos. Uh, if you don't want to get the bell on, you could always follow us woo, over here on Facebook. It's coming up across the screen here in just a moment. There it is right there. Go ahead and follow us on Facebook, guys. We go ahead and post funny memes, and I also let you know about all the videos that are coming up uh, on a fairly regular basis. Until next time, guys, I'm Mike. This is Turn of Century Games. I hope you all have a good one.